how to know whether you are spiritually minded versus carnally minded, right? So to be spiritually minded is life and it is peace, but to be carnally minded is death. You can find that in Romans chapter 8 verse 6 and I love that scripture. It kind of helps me align back to God's kingdom agenda. Like to be spiritually minded is going to give me life and a life of peace, but to be carnally minded is death okay it brings nothing but death spiritual death okay now the easiest way to find out whether you are or check yourself self-evaluate whether you are spiritually minded instead of currently minded is you go from i want i need i think to god wants god needs god thinks so you no longer self-centered like i want this I need this. I think this. And then you go to God wants this. God thinks this. And God feels this, right? Feeling, thinking, wanting. It transforms. You graduate from your own feelings, your own thought processes, your own wants to God's wants, God's feelings, God's needs, and emotions and the thing the beautiful thing here is that his are pure and they're holy okay now the character of god is actually in galatians 5 22. another thing to help you understand whether you are walking in the flesh or walking in the spirit is galatians chapter 5. galatians chapter 5 outlines the works of the flesh what you are doing to participate in the flesh in the canality also i want to highlight revelations 21 verse 8 now let's go there because this is rarely mentioned when people talk about the works of the flesh they rarely mention revelations 21 verse 8 but i'll tell you what it says it says but the cowardly if you're a coward if you are fearful you mentioned first that is being carnal that is being working in the flesh unbelieving like you have doubts about god you have doubts about his promises for your life abominable the murders sexually immoral the sorcerers idolaters and all liars will have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone which is a second death now that scripture coupled with galatians 5 verse 20 to 21 tells you what the works of the flesh are because there it goes idolaters any any uncleanness fornication hatred contentions jealousies anger outbursts it talks about selfish ambitions here it says envy murders drunkenness rivalries and things of that nature so here you get an entire list of what it means to participate in the works of the flesh those do not glorify the kingdom of god they do not glorify the spirit of god they don't acknowledge or glorify jesus christ they don't reveal jesus christ they don't glorify jesus christ okay that is how you know whether you're walking in the spirit or you're walking in the flesh when what you are doing is glorifying the flesh it satisfies the flesh, the world, what the world thinks. You are participating in the works of the flesh. When what you are doing is pointing people to Jesus, it is glorifying Jesus, it is revealing Jesus, then you are walking in the spirit because the fruit of the spirit is what? It is love, it is joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness and self-control and gentleness as well okay so it's nine fruit of the spirit and it's fruit and not s it's not fruits of the spirit it is only one holy spirit and this is his character and because we are followers of jesus christ we are to cultivate the same character as the holy spirit by aligning ourselves and listening to the conviction that he gives us like primrose no don't do this then i realign immediately repent and ask god lord i am so sorry i confess that sin give me the grace not to compare myself give me the grace not to say rude things in my mind 
about that person. Give me the grace not to, uh, whatever it may be. You ask him for the grace for that, and then you walk in that. And then when he tells you no, you stop, and then you pivot away from that. You don't say, oh, I just can't control myself. It's just all of us as sinners. No. You have the Holy Spirit. You have the conviction. Act on the conviction. Act on the conviction. Do not make excuses for sins. Do not make excuses for sins, especially secret sins. The Bible says, whosoever hides their sins shall not prosper. So some of y'all are not prospering because you're busy hiding your sins and you make excuses for it because your bishop thinks it's okay. Your mommy thinks it's okay. You still go to heaven. No, without holiness, no man will see the Lord. Without holiness, no man will see the Lord. Okay, so don't participate in this culture of hiding your sins of making excuses for your sins and your sins are in the flesh like you know it's wrong but because people around you are okay with it you think god will be okay with it Mm -mm. that is not how it works we are to walk in righteousness we are to have the heart that conforms to the laws of god Let him give you his heart. Let him purify your heart so your heart can conform to his laws, which is Jesus. Jesus Christ is the word of God. Okay? He is your pattern. He is your pattern. Jesus is your pattern. So in these instances, when you look at the fruit of the Spirit and you look at the nine fruit of the Spirit and then you look at the list of the works of the flesh, this is how you know you are walking in the flesh. When you start to participate and make excuses for the things of the flesh, that is you participating in carnality. Leave that. Flee that and go walk in the spirit. Cultivate the fruit of the spirit. Cultivate gentleness. Cultivate patience. Cultivate all these different aspects of his character. So you can grow spiritually. So you can prune you. So you can bear much fruit. Okay? Now, the covenant name of God that enables us to walk in our hearts conforming to his law is Jehovah Zidkenu. So you ask, Lord, give me the grace. You are my Jehovah Zidkenu. You are my righteousness. He is our righteousness. Without the Holy Spirit, you cannot be righteous. Without God, you cannot take on his character. Without God, you cannot be righteous. You cannot be morally correct. You cannot have your heart conform to his laws if you don't have Jehovah Zidkenu. If you do not submit to Jehovah Zidkenu. If you don't submit to the school of the Holy Spirit. If you don't submit to the convictions of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Jehovah Zidkenu will enable you to walk in righteousness. Remind him of of his covenant with you, his covenant of being our righteousness. But you have to hearken to his voice when he tells you no. Whether it's comfortable or not, whether you look weak in that moment or not, do it anyways. Because what he's doing is he is squashing out that pride from you. Because if you walk in pride, It is not the world that fights you. It is God himself that resists the proud and lifts up the humble. He will resist you if you don't conform your heart to his heart. 